Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead. We are out in our butchering room today. We are making uh, patty sausage. We mixed up our, uh, cut up our pork cubes in this pan right here, and then we mixed a seasoning mix in. Now, we, I have a particular seasoning mix that I really like, and this is it right here. This is Elegs Old Plantation Pork Sausage Seasoning, one bag, correctly mixes 25 pounds. I've been using this for, oh gosh, probably 25 years or more. And we ground it the first time, and it looks like this. We always put our seasoning on it and grind it one time. Now this is very coarse. Once we get it to this point, we take it to the house, we cook out a patty to see if we need to add more seasoning, or if we need to add more meat to break it down some. But this time, we had 30 pounds of pork that we needed to grind. We put one bag in for 25 pounds, and actually it mixed it pretty good. We were really satisfied with the taste. Wanda, me, and Amanda, all of us tasted it. We really thought it was a good taste. So we're putting it in our, uh, our meat grinder up here at the top. Now this is a uh, Cabela's meat grinder. You can see right here on the side, this is a, one, of the, one of their big ones. This is what it looks like when you run it the second time through a small plate. The first time we run it, we run it through a plate like this right here. Got the large holes because you want to cut it pretty quick and get it mixed, your seasoning mixed in with it. Then we mix the seasoning. We take our hands after we've ground it once and we mix everything up and we bring it back over and we have a plate here. This plate, this plate has the 1 8 inch holes in it. And it grinds it to a very good consistency the second time, thus mixing the seasonings in it even better than it was. Now I let it sit for about 15 to 20 minutes in between grindings so that the uh, flavors meshed in the meat better. I'll give you a little demonstration here. It'll make a little bit of noise, I know. Um, this is kind of a homemade plunger of mine. We lost the plunger, and I end up having to uh, make a plunger. So I'm going to turn it on. You see, it doesn't make much noise. And then what we do is I get a handful of meat. I bring it up here, and we push it down through here. And we take the plunger. We put it in, and this is what we're looking at on the other end here. It comes out like this. Now we, we do this not only for our uh, sausage, we also do this for our hamburger meat because we like our hamburger meat ground rather fine. We don't like the, uh, the big coarse ground hamburger meat like you get from the grocery stores a lot of times. Because it just, it makes a burger that wants to uh, fall apart a lot of times. You see there what it looks like? Coming out. This is about a 60-40 mixture of lean and fat. For sausage, that's what we like because we like it to be able to cook it slow in a skillet and it have enough grease to be able to, uh, to cook it out. So this is the project for Deep South Homestead. Now Wanda's in the house today. She's actually canning sweet potatoes today. And this right here, I don't know whether it'll be in this video or not, but we're actually going to be canning some of this uh, sausage here. We're going to be putting it in some pint jars. I'll give you an idea of how it starts off there. We're going to be canning some of this in about half of this. We're going to probably do 15 pounds of it in pint jars and 15 pounds of it in one pound packs made into patties and put them in the freezer so that we have our patties already made and then the ground stuff will be... Um, let me turn this off just a minute. The ground sausage put into uh, the can uh, jars for canning 
will be used for things like making uh, cheese dips uh, and stuff like that for when we have gatherings or get-togethers or something like that or maybe just for at night you know we just want to have some chips and, and dip and stuff like that we'll use the sausage in it or if we want to make casseroles we want to just talk about using the sausage mix in casseroles and stuff like that so we will be canning probably half of what we grind today so I want to take y'all along and just show you what we're doing here at uh, Deep South Homestead on this Saturday morning. Uh, we've done been working in the cabin this morning, but we came over to do the meat. And it's just going to be a day of getting a lot done here at Deep South Homestead. So, okay, guys, I wanted to decide to take a break for a minute and come out here and help me. She is making up sausage patties. We are putting them in wax paper and folding them over like that. And once she gets eight per pack, She's going to put them into these Ziploc bags like this, and that's the way we'll store them in the freezer so that when we take one out, we'll already have eight patties pre-made. And it makes it a whole lot simpler because you don't have to get your hands all messy in the morning making sausage patties. You can just take them out, slide them into a skillet, cook them right there. So this is the next step of our process that we're doing. As you can see, Wanda's just constantly making them up. We're going to make up several packs of them because we got like this bowl full and and you know me. I'm still grinding here. Still got over there to go, so we'll be canning. Once we make up several patties, we're going to can the rest, so. All right, we're through grinding up the meat. Uh, Wanda has packed up several packs of patties and we still have this giant bowl, we've got about 20 pounds here um, of ground sausage. Now, one thing we are noticing about this sausage, now I hope the air conditioner in the back is not making too much noise, but it's keeping the room cold. The, the thing we're noticing about this sausage is when we get our hands all greasy handling it, we can put them under warm water and we don't have to put soap on them to get the grease off. This is the first time we've ever had this with pork. Now these pigs were grass fed with a small amount of grain every day of whole kernel corn. They eat, two pigs eat half a gallon of whole kernel corn every day. And they just, the rest of their food was just grass and swamp. They lived in the woods, they lived in a swamp and eat grass. I don't know if that has anything to do with it or not, we're noticing that the meat, I don't know if I can get close enough, the meat is really red. It looks like beef when you take it out of the freezer. It's not the pink looking meat like pork is. Uh, the further I get away from this, you can kind of tell a little bit about what I'm talking about, about how red it is. Uh, even Amanda looked at it and she couldn't believe that uh, it was pork. She says, that's beef. There's no way that's pork. It's too red. And so we don't know if the grass feeding it has anything to do with that or not, but um, we're noticing a lot of things about home-raised pork here that we have and the way we raised it. Uh, we don't know if feeding it the corn and it eating the grass is causing the fat to just wash off really easy. Um, not sure about that, but it is a new one for us. So Wanda's in the house right now. I'm out here fixing to start putting this into one pound packs and putting it into the freezer. Today we are working on sweet potatoes and pork. I've got the canner going right now. I just put seven quarts of sweet potatoes in it. So those will be coming out in 25 minutes. Well, the stove will go off in 25 minutes and it's got to cool down. So another 30, 45 minutes and then we'll have our sweet potatoes out. In the meantime, Danny and I have been grinding um, pork sausage. And so I wanted to try a couple of things with the sausage this time. First off, we're going to take fresh pork sausage and I'm going to raw pack it in my jars and I'm going to can it. And we're going to use it for um, casseroles and things like that that we want to make. And I thought it would be great with salsa and cheese. Hey, a dip made in heaven, right? 
The other thing we're going to do is we're going to make patties and pack them in a large mouth pipe jar. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix my patties up and put them in a skillet. And I'm not going to cook them done. I'm just going to brown them really well. And then we're going to pack them in the jar and pour the juice from cooking them out over on it. And we're going to put those in there. So when we get through, we should have one jar of patty sausage ready to eat for breakfast. And then we'll have the other six or seven, never how many fills the canner up, of um, just patty sausage. Okay, I tried to keep the patties reasonably um, the same size and thickness. And I tried to make it so that they would fit in my jars, each one of them. So, we're going to cook it just a minute or so longer on this side. We're going to flip it. And then we're going to put it in our jars and put this juice in the jars. And the patties will continue to cook in, in the jar and create more juice. Okay, I flipped the sausage one time. We're going to leave it here about a minute. And we're just going to put it in the jars. And if I do not have enough oil here, I'm going to heat a little bit of my lard up and pour over the top of it just to be on the safe side. So this is some of our lard that we cooked out. Beautiful. I put a little bit in here so I have more juice to go over my sausage. And we're going to be packing them shortly. I managed to get five of these sausage patties in one jar. I have three left. I'm going to see if they will fit in a half pint just to see how it works. All right, Ms. Wanda is packing some in the jars to, uh, to be canned. She also has, if I can pick this up, this one we're doing some experimenting with. This one she made some sausage patties, kind of pre-cooked them a little bit, packed them down in the jar, and poured some of the liquid back around them. And these will be pressure cooked just like the rest of them are. We're experimenting with that. Then she did some pre-cooked sausage meat here, put it in the jar, put a little juice back around it. And then we are, like I said, we're raw packing some. So we're kind of doing an experiment to basically see which process works the best here. So we're going to continue to show you guys what we're doing. We'll show you what it looks like when we take them out, how it works, so that we can all learn together. She will put these into pressure canner for an hour and a half, and we'll see how it goes, guys. When you're raw packing, you don't have to add any liquid because they will add their own liquid. The ones that we pre-cooked, we did put some liquid in because that's the proper way to do it. So we're going to get them in the pressure cooker here in a minute. We've got it all sitting here ready to go. We're going to show you what it looks like when we get to the end, guys. Okay, guys, here's the finished product. As you can see, the one with the sausage patties right there is still bubbling pretty good. But this is the canned sausage. This is all ground sausage. Just took it out of the canner, waiting for it to uh, actually cool off and ping down. This is the sweet potatoes Ms. Wanda canned. They look awesome. So, this is it, guys. The experiment continues. Canned ground sausage. Can it be done? What will it look like when it cools? Thank you, guys, from Deep South Homestead.